Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, also in Davos today, engaging in conversation with Klaus Schwab directly in front of the audience, the delegates. Now, this is where things get really interesting. In this conversation, he talks about not just the economy, but the convergence of digital technology and human beings, artificial intelligence and human beings, and how that plays into the future economy under the new world order. Here he is. Era we are definitely in, and uh, and I think twenty four will probably be the year where all of this will scale. Yeah, Satya, I have to confess, um, some of the introductions of people uh, which I had to write, I wrote with uh, <laughs> Chat GPT. Uh, uh, but don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. No. Um, there's a lot of discussion about AI during this meeting, and we talk about impact. We may later talk about productivity, particularly in the context of the economy. But um, what is overlooked in this discussion? Do you feel we talk about impact on skills and so on? What What is overlooked in your opinion? I mean, not, it's not overlooked, but I think what is um, salient, I think, is Obviously, I talked a lot about what it's going to do to horizontal knowledge work and frontline work, but I think it's about what AI will do to science, uh, perhaps is the most interesting thing uh, to me. Because um, take, uh, in fact, just last week, um, we announced something which, you know, I had not, you know, I, I sort of felt like, yeah, this is something that can be done, but I had not understood that this can be done. Um, so we took one of our models called Matagen, which is a sort of a generative model to generate new molecules and material. Um, and we put it through an entire round trip where we came up with new molecules for a new material, went to work with in collaboration with one of the national labs in the United States, the Pacific Northwest National Lab, um, and figured out how to produce a new battery that's got 70% less lithium. Uh, right, that's just phenomenal to sort of th when we think about uh, the you know the climate uh, the energy transition. It's about taking 250 years of chemistry and somehow bringing it down to 25 years, right? So this is a proof point of that. Same thing is happening in biology. I see Jim in the front row here. You know, if I think about what we're doing even with Page and what we can do with cancer detection, uh, or what we're doing with Broad uh, in, uh, you know, again, in molecular, in, in biology, and to be able to use AI to sim simulate uh, the molecular behavior. Uh, so I think that science is probably the place where we will start seeing real acceleration. So up to now, the digitization revolution has brought new tools to science, but has not fundamentally accelerated science. But if we can fundamentally accelerate science, the, you know, cures to diseases, the energy transition, uh, fundamental new material uh, science, all of these, I think, are going to be pretty, pretty profound. Now, everybody talks about AI, but actually, there are many other technologies in the fourth industrial revolution. And I think it's particularly the combination of AI, AI with some of those technologies what other technologies create uh, this progress for society, in your opinion? On the technology front, I'm always sort of, you know, anchoring back to three things, right? One is um, when it comes to the core compute infrastructure, we just need more of it. Uh, so we have the von Neumann machine that still rules the world. Uh, and the question is, can we birth the new quantum revolution? So I'm always excited about quantum. In fact, some of what we're seeing is AI as the emulation layer for what is going to be the simulation layer, which is quantum, right? So if I think about uh, these two things, that's very powerful. So quantum is one, AI, of course. The other one is, you know, mixed reality, presence. I'm very interested in 
you know, when I think about embodied AI is the other way to think about it, right? Which is whether it's sensors on us, which is sort of a little more of the devices like VR, AR, mixed reality, or, you know, humanoid robots uh, is another one, or, you know, or, or automobiles that are autonomous. So I think of these three things uh, as perhaps where compute, AI, and uh, fundamentally autonomous and mixed reality devices are all going to come together to create, I think, the platforms of innovation. Would you agree when we look back in history? Um... Mm. So they are looking at convergence, transhumanism, As I've said, I, I don't think we need to be afraid of technology, but I think we need to be afraid of how some people might use technology. So we'll see where it goes, folks. Arm yourselves with knowledge and be prepared for the future because it's coming, whether we like it or not. Out in Calgary today,